I'm Shannon Mix, and today we'll be turning this literal pile of junk into a cute miniature fireplace for your desktop. Hello friends and welcome back. Grab a nice warm mug of your favorite beverage and settle in for a cozy creative video perfect for a chilly autumn day. This video has been a long time coming. I teased this project back in January and I've only finally gotten around to making it, but today is the moment that at least one of you has been waiting for. The origin story for this project comes from my week-long dumpster diving Lollapalooza where I spent an entire week raiding my favorite dumpsters across the city in order to demonstrate what a wealth of perfectly good material could be salvaged from them. That's where I came across this complete fossil of a digital picture frame. I understand why someone threw it out. It looks like it probably has pretty mediocre resolution and a very limited viewing angle, but I think it's still working, so I'm going to add a bunch more garbage and some acrylic paint to it and see if I can't turn it into a cute miniature fireplace and tabletop ambiance generator. The first thing to do, I suppose, is to test if it still works. And to do that, we'll need a power cable, a USB stick, and some sort of video. Okay, so now that I'm sure that this puppy is actually working, I can start constructing the skeleton of the fireplace that will surround it. And I think I'm gonna start with a quick and dirty cardboard mock-up. And while I'm working on that, I'll see if I can sweet talk Phil into 3D printing me some legs for the screen to stand on. All right, I've literally just slapped together a super simple template here as a sort of proof of concept. And while it's pretty sloppy, it's definitely good enough to show me that I'm on the right track. I've also already learned some things, such as the fact that this base is going to have to be much wider than I first thought, and also that when I built the base, I need to take into account the height of those amazing little legs that Phil's printed off for me. It might also look like I've hidden a lot of the screen, but that's actually on purpose. Fortunately, I thought to test out an actual fireplace video before constructing this, and in order to keep the right ratio on the video, there are these big empty spaces on the top and bottom of the screen, so I'll just hide those as part of the design. So now I'll take some more precise measurements and I'll use those along with this cardboard template to start building the real deal. I also figured this would be a perfect moment to use up some of my foam core salvaged on garbage day during a snowstorm because it's super lightweight but thick enough to give some good structural stability. So 
I've basically just reconstructed the cardboard version but with cleaner angles and proper measurements and mostly self-sustaining structures but I did decide to leave them as free floating units for the moment because I do want to finish off this surface first just to sort of finalize the height of the whole project before I attach everything all together. And um, I guess that means this might be a good time to look at the design inspiration behind this project. So I flipped through several different publications from the late Victorian era in an attempt to find some inspiration and I now know a lot more about fireplaces than I ever expected to. I went into it looking for a traditional Victorian fireplace, but as it turns out, and in retrospect this comes as no surprise, fireplaces varied wildly according to the region, social class, and even the room in which the fireplace was located. Areas such as the formal sitting room, commonly seen by visitors, would have the most ornate decorations, while private spaces such as bedrooms would generally have simpler models. In the briefest of overviews, at the beginning of the Victorian era, fireplaces were still often constructed in the more classical Georgian and Regency styles, and then were gradually replaced by more elaborate designs, often featuring floral motifs, and then towards the end of Victoria's reign, they became simpler, with more geometrical designs. Two things quickly became apparent to me as I looked into this, and that was that one, I wanted to avoid the black cast iron look that was a common style, because while they can be incredibly beautiful, it's just not the cozy warm red brick look I had envisioned, and two, that I wanted to steer away from anything too intricate or with heavily sculpted elements, because that style would be much harder to replicate with the materials I have on hand. So, after looking at many, many images of fireplaces, both from period publications as well as modern day photographs, I settled on an amalgamation of these few photos. Something with a brick interior leading back into the firebox, with a faux wooden surround and header, and a raised hearth, maybe with some sort of fancy fireplace fender or fence around it. And of course, a nice big mantle, maybe with some fancy crown molding, just to have somewhere to hang your Christmas stockings. So now that we have a better idea what we want it to look like, let's get down to making it.
Okay, so between that little montage and some off-camera work that I did, this is where we're at. I've established a floor and built a tiled hearth on it. The interior portion is bricked and trimmed off with an old picture frame, and then off camera I constructed these little pillars, the shaft of which is made from some trim I pulled off an old bench. And then to make them look a little bit more like columns, I made some simple bases and headers out of styrofoam and wooden paint sticks, just trying to give it some dimensionality. It's still missing a little section here that will tie the column into the eventual molding of the mantle, so that needs to be filled in once I have a better idea what exactly I want to do. It's slowly drifting away from a strictly Victorian style fireplace, but I'm not even mad about it. In fact, I think it's shaping up to be one cute pile of junk. Then, lastly, I cleaned up the underlying facade by finishing off the sides with some masonite and then covering the whole front face with some cardboard to hide some of the joints of the foam core. Next, I'm going to try and tie this all together and unify the look by coating all of the exposed surfaces of the surround with a grout and glue mixture, which should add some texture while simultaneously hiding all the joints where the edge meet, and I'm hoping it'll look like painted concrete once I'm done with it. So let's mix some more grout, shall we? interesting period sources I found was a book from 1923, admittedly well past the Victorian era, entitled The Home Fires, A Few Suggestions in Brick Fireplaces, which offered a variety of styles of brick fireplaces, including dimensions of various parts, as well as total number of bricks needed for each style. Besides giving me a concrete idea of what some styles of the time actually looked like, it also introduced a new aspect of the fireplace that I was unfamiliar with, the fireplace motto. These short phrases were presumably to be carved across the front of your fireplace, and this book came with a few pages dedicated entirely to them, ranging from broad generic statements to lofty literary quotes the most questionable of which was from Dante, stating, from little sparks may burst a mighty flame. A less than comforting thought when you consider its context. I thought the motto would be a super cute addition to my fireplace, so I chose one from the list, shying away from anything too lofty or religious, and going instead with where friends meet, hearts warm, attributed to a fireplace in Wales. I decided to center mine in the middle, just below the mantle, taking inspiration from this image, and so I set to work constructing a suitable frame for it.
while we wait for the last coat of paint to dry, let me just pop in here to give a few thoughts on the project. First of all, the final project is both very cute and satisfying and also not at all what I had envisioned in my mind when I first started out. I was really hoping to go for something more directly inspired by history, but instead of being able to recreate an actual style from any specific time in the past, I feel like I wound up with a strange amalgamation of elements from all over the time. I'm not mad about it, it still turned out pretty well, and really, that's part of working with recycled materials. Sometimes you have to make compromises in order to end up with the best final product. It just looks like it belongs in a house that's been renovated several times. I do honestly think I could have done a better job making all of the different materials blend together if I had used something like Plasti Dip, or even if I had just taken a bit more time with the wood filler before painting, but I was running very short on time, and as it is, it definitely passes the 5 foot test. It's only if you get up really close and start analyzing it that maybe it doesn't hold up quite as well. And in terms of recycled materials, besides the little feet that are holding the screen up, this entire thing is made from scraps, most of which were pulled directly from the trash, saving at least one small pile of materials from a landfill. If you are into upcycling and supporting creators that work with recycled materials, I do have a coffee account linked in the description where you can go leave a one-time tip or buy me a coffee. I've also linked Kayla of McNerney Makes. She is equally dedicated to working with recycled materials and has hosted a couple panels on the topic for this summer's costume symposium. And now, let's take a look at the results of this week's Glow Up. 